with the sort of Italian number one, was that, did you think, right, I need to move on and, and look for something else then, or? This was it, yeah. So I just thought, like, I've got to get out of Bangor City, unfortunately. Um, just literally for the whole reason of me not playing. It's as simple as that. I've got to get playing somewhere. And I had a few offers um, in the coming off again. But I'll be honest, it was with a couple of lower teams, which I'm not going to mention names, but I went to the setups. I, you know, I chatted to the gaffers. They're like, yeah, we want you, this, that, and the other, daddy, daddy, da. And I it just, I looked at it, I thought it wasn't for me. And then I had Witcher Cholport on saying, you know, we couldn't we couldn't give you first team games um at the start of the season, but we're we're having a bit of a rejig, etc. And you know, if you want to come here as the first keeper, you can come. So I went down there, I chatted to the guys there, and it was um, you know, it was it was nice to go back and I I wanted to sign and I signed. Um and it, I remember it was January last year. We had some, and and it was even mm, start of Feb, right? And there was loads of games called off. So many games called off. You know, must have had two or three weeks without a game, or I think we even went longer. You know, like four weeks without a game. Yeah, yeah. But then I finally got my first game. Did well. Did well in my second game as well. Did okay in my third, and then the fourth game was the last game before COVID happened. Uh, oh, that was a bad day, that was. That was a bad day at the office. Well, Four, it went, it went down 4-0 in 35 minutes. I was just like, oh, dear. Yeah. To be fair, we went out second half, right? I'm telling you, we should have won the game. Should have been 5-4. Promise you. Colm away. Colm in... Um, was it Colm? No, it wasn't Colm. It was... Um, Earlham. Earlham oh, yeah. away in yeah. Manchester. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I got you mixed up. Earlham away, it was a dark, dark day. It was freezing <laughs> cold, windy. It was, oh, it was bad. But um, uh, but we we were half expecting the game to be called off because this was when this was when the pre- at the time the prem had been halted. All the leagues had been halted. Literally, I'm sure the Northwest Counties must have been the last league to be halted. Yeah, literally the last league in the whole country. Because everyone was like, there was no fixtures on that weekend. And I I think we were like one of only three in the whole league as well, to be on. Um, and we played it, we lost. And that was literally, it was it just went went bad from there, basically. Um, so with the club then, obviously, once everything's been halted and, and COVID's become, you know, this major pandemic, the club basically, you know, it's got to be tough for anyone at that level. Are they basically saying to you, not much we can do like if you're free to go and look elsewhere like what, it wasn't what? even that no so they were just like listen like because we had belief that you know realistically and I was looking at it as a as a young lad I was thinking oh yeah this will be over by yeah. this will be over by July it'll be happy days blah de blah blah you know which which pretty much everyone did I think at the time no yeah. one knew it was going to be this bad yeah. um and you know, we were just, oh, the lads were doing, you know, oh, yeah, we want, want you doing three 5K runs a week, this, that, and the other, da, da, da. And, you know, it happened. we did it May. Uh, lads, yeah, they've halted the league again. And now they, no, then they null and voided the league. And it was just like, oh, this is going a bit, a bit bad. But to be fair, at which it was properly, you know, proper family oriented orient club and really close knit lads and, close knit from top to bottom and to be fair they asked me oh, Jack do you want to come in do you want to help um, do some like sort of grounds work there and right. you know sort of do some work on the pitch do you want to put a new fence up because they plan- they planned it- they were planning on it at the time and they have um, built a new stand which looks really good to be fair I look at it and think oh do you know what I'd love to be back there sort of thing but I look at it and think yeah it's re- it's really good what they've done there at Whitchurch, and I, I I worked there for a couple of days and stayed at the Gaffer's house, and it was it was really nice, yeah, really nice, like nice couple of days, and then I'll be honest, it's sort of after that, it was Gibraltar was always sort of in the pipeline, sort of January, and it didn't happen. Was he the from- same owner as Banger? Is it some? Kind That's of- right, yeah. So oh. so the Gaffer was like, well. It, Sort of, it was, it was sort of in my ear about, it wasn't like, it wasn't for definite, but it was like, there was talks about Gibraltar happening in January, you know, me and a couple of the other lads from Bangor are going to go there, it's going to be happy days, blah, 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 but it didn't happen. Um, but then, 
June, July time, uh, you know, there's sort more serious talk about it, you know. Uh, the gaffer and the assistant gaffer, uh, Stephen Vaughan Jr. and um, Luke Purcell, when, you know, they were out in Gibraltar. Um, but then there wasn't any word from the Jib FA when the league was going to get going and this, that and the other. And it, it was it was a really frustrating wait because we signed our contracts um, like must have been June time, I think. And, you know, it was it was hard at the time. I had to, I had to tell family members, etc. And I had to tell Richards, listen, you know, I, I'm going to go to Gibraltar. I w- I'd like to do this. And it's the first time I w- I've been and lived away from home, mm. um, which which was quite a big thing for my family, which obviously understandably, but it's a big thing. And it was such a long wait. Yeah, I'll be this week. So, you know, oh yeah, last week in July. Oh yeah, it'll be this week in August. It'll be this week. It'll be this week. It'll be this week. And finally, the end of August, we got out there. You know, me, Liam Nash, who's back playing in the, I think Evo Stick Prem down south, Ismian. I think he might be playing something like that. Um, but he's, he's, you know, he's a good lad of good. He got, you know, he got a good background behind him, pro at Gillingham. Um, and there was a lad called Lenny Armstrong who was previously at Bangor. Um, who came and a lad called um, Wally. So Wally came, he was a banger. And um, Luke Wall, sorry, I couldn't, couldn't remember his name off the top <laughs> of my head. <laughs> oh, names. Uh, loads of names, yeah. Wally, top lad as well. Um, you know, still loads of potential. He's only like 23. Um, and you know, I was thinking like, wow, this is, you know, I think we could go for the title either, you know, here. And, you know, with the with the lads that we had already, you know, we had a good spine of the team and it was it was something we could build on. Um, but we we got to a decent ish start. We had a good little preseason. I got an injury again. Um nasty injury in preseason. It was um broken tibia. Yeah. Or was it right. Bib? One or the other. The little bone in my leg got broken in a in a tackle, that was. Yeah. Um in, in a match. Sorry. In a match, yeah. In a match. Don't don't mention it. It's an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Um but yeah. And what was the standard um, like over there and overall like standard, you know what? So, it was so varied. Mm. So so varied. So the top three and top say top four even were I'd say, in comparison to, say, Welsh Prem, competing top, top Welsh Prem. So, you know, they do okay in Europe in the qualifying stages. So it was half decent. You know, it was a good good level, the top four. Then, say, the bottom five, bottom six, poor. Really, yeah. Yeah, you know, it was... But, but that was literally just because of... the In terms of, you know, they'd, they'd only been... Um, they'd only been qualified by UEFA or whatever it was, you know, given sort of the thumbs up, the green light for yeah. qualification in 2013, something like that. So they'd only been, you know, doing the qualifiers and stuff for the last seven years. And, the, you know, the ones at the top were always the ones that were getting in Europe. So they're the ones with the biggest budgets, yeah. the best teams. And the other, the other, the other, the others didn't really have a chance. But the, 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 the standard between top and bottom is absolutely massive. Quite a few thrashings then, like a few big scorelines. Yeah, yeah, as you as you've probably seen, yeah, massive scorelines, massive, massive scorelines, and it's um, it's just it it is when you watch it as well, it's just mad the um, excuse me, the variation in standard. Hmm. Because said uh, did the injury was it obviously like you breaking the bone in your leg there? That's taking you out quite a while there, isn't it? That was like. <sighs> It wasn't a full break. It was like a crack or something, hairline yeah. fracture. Yeah. So, but it was still awfully painful. And like, you know, I was trying to, tr- I was trying to train through it for like a couple of weeks, and I was just like, I need a good couple of weeks off. And for me to prop, you know, f- from me break- doing the injury and properly recovering, it was a good eight nine weeks, um, which interfered with. One of my games where I didn't play it was against, to be fair, it was against the bottom club, College 1975, they're called. We beat them anyway, 7 7 1 or something like that. Um, and then 
the last game I played in Gibraltar was against um, it was a Munskal fight. It was Bruno's Magpies are called right. There's some um, good games over there, isn't there, for the team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's they're all based on like sort of some of them are places in Gibraltar. Some are just like example, obviously Boca. I don't know who may. I, I, they're, they're just like mad. If you, if you you know if you Google the names, it gives you an explanation as to yeah. like why they're called that. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, uh, the last last game was against them, and I, we were doing well. You know, it was nil nil, 80th minute, chasing the game. They had ten men. You know, we were going to get a winner, and then um, a ball came over the top between me and Lenny, and a striker had come on. So this this team, I, I, we. This was the team that I played in pre-season when I broke my leg against them. Mm. So there was a bit of like, sort of bit in the side, and yeah. everyone knew I was fired up for this game. Everyone was like, "If you, you know, I knew sort of people were saying like, oh, if he's not careful, he's going to get sent off. He's going to do something stupid in this game.'" And everyone was saying it. So a ball came over the top between me and Lenny, and there was a striker who'd been subbed on. Um, in the seventy fifth minute, right, and in the preseason game, I was arguing with him from from the stands because he was sort of like, sort of like um, mocking me and stuff like that. So I, I was having a bit of a bicker, blah blah blah, you know. And there was no fans in the stadium, so you could sort of do that. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. as if like you know I was going to get any backlash from anyone. It was just like, you know, it was just you could hear everything that was being said yeah. as well. Um, you know, ball came over the top between me and Lenny. This strike and out. Pushes Lenny straight into me, smashes me. Lenny smashes me in the face. I go flopping on the floor. So I pick the ball up and go up to this lad and just shoulder barge him, get, you know, call him whatever names. Yeah, yeah. And then shoulder barge him and then he goes down like I've had butted him. Rolling about, you know, like sort of a continental thing to do, isn't it? Um, you know, I'm VAR trying to... Like, what was that, sorry? No VAR in, in the Gibraltar Premier League. Oh, of course, no, no, no VAR, mate. And then, um, you know, I'm sort of like, come on, get up. You, you know, you're six foot six, you weigh 15 stone, get up. Mm. Trying to drag this this lad up and like the referee just pulled a red card. I was like, oh my God. And then with that, it's obviously a three game ban. It's, and it was just so, it was just like, oh no. Mm. Um. So then, and then, <laughs> here we go. So I get subbed off on 85. No, I get sent off on 85, 89. 1-0 and I'm just in the changing rooms I hear them sh- and I, you know I hear them coming in the lads and they're like oh, I'm like no way we haven't just lost that game you know I hear them coming in bam 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 on the walls I'm like oh no and uh, my head was absolutely gone from there it was real frustrating and that week after that I went home so that weekend I went home um, just to see family because there was a little break and then from there, it sort of went down a little bit at the club in terms of like one thing or another with wages and, you know, obviously people not getting paid and blah, blah, blah. So, unfortunately, it was a bit, I, I knew it was happening. I knew it was going to happen. Um, we, we had a good result when I was banned against um, Lincoln Reddings. We had a nil-nil draw. We could have probably even nicked it on like a smash and grab. But to be fair, we had a good nil-nil draw. And I think that was the last game we played. And yeah, from there, you know, we, we were not we were unable to fulfil fixtures because we didn't have um, the right amount of homegrown players, etc. And from there, we, we you know, was Brits, the British lads had to go. Had to go. All of you, yeah. Was it just a case of what money problem? It was literally like, you know, we knew it was happening. The club had been disbanded and then, Literally, the, the weekend was like, oh, lads, by the way, you've got to be out of the apartment. And like, oh, I'll be like, oh, right. Um, we've not sorted flights out. We've not done this. We've not done that. We all um, live in in the same place, yeah. So there was, yeah, there was four, three or four of us Brits in the same place, yeah. Wow. In in a place just across the border in La Linea. How was it living over? Like, obviously completely different to what you're used to. Was it giving you a taste of what is play abroad again? I loved it. I'd, honestly, I loved it. I loved the weather. I liked the. I I liked the people. Um, you know, obviously, I spoke no Spanish, and it was frustrating because in that town, 
it was. Uh, let's be honest, they're not going to like the British, are they? Just because, in terms of like we've got their land, it was always you know the Spaniards look at it and it's their land. Yeah. So you know us Brits walking along, shirts off, sort of thing. Yeah. And everyone's like you know just looking at us, you know. But you know when we went into shops and coffee shops and blah blah blah, everyone was always sound. It was a, it was a nice place to live. The beaches. Um, you know, we we had the nightlife as well. Marbella was only up the road, and it was a re- it was it's a really nice location, Gibraltar. Um, and I I re- I, re- I really like it over there, and I would definitely go back in terms of if the money's right and if the time's right, I'd yeah. go there. Cool, cool. So you all got sent back then with like obviously not much notice. Then then what you're thinking? Obviously, a bit of a mad situation. Full stop. So, yeah, I did, I, we got sent back with not much notice. But the thing was, um, obviously, the lads were kind of aiming to stay in Gibraltar because we all loved it over there and we liked it. We liked the lifestyle. We liked, we did like it over there. Um, and to be honest, you know, us lads, we, we kind of shone in the league because, to be honest, you know, we were one of the better... We were, the group of us, the whole group of us, were, were one, of the be- one of the better lot of lads in the, in the league technically and tactically just because you know that's the way it was um, and I I got pulled in with one of the top clubs oh, sorry give me one second Bye. I'm on a Zoom call <laughs> I'll edit it out there don't worry <laughs> no worries oh that sound right so I with they, they were looking for clubs the lads and so was I I am um, and I got I got a call from one of the top three clubs to go there. No, sorry, top four. Um, and I was like, yeah, of course. You know, I, I met the gaffer. We agreed money, agreed the contract, blah, blah, blah. Um, so from there, you know, I went home knowing that I can go back to Gibraltar with, you know, I've got something there. You know, I've got something on the table. I don't need to be stressing over Christmas that, oh, no, what am I going to do for a club, blah, blah, blah. It was all sorted, um, but I came to a decision. Obviously, the COVID situation, literally over Christmas, from from when I got home on the tenth, you know, Wales went into lockdown, England went into lockdown, um, and it was just like, oh dear, like this situation's getting really bad. And then Gibraltar went into lockdown over Christmas, and I was just like, right, is the le- is the season going to get null and voided again? What's going to happen? You know, COVID rates soaring through the roof new records with deaths, and I was just like, oh, no. So I had a decision, really, to make. What is best for me? Do I stay here or do I go back to Gibraltar? With the money that I was on over here and the money I was on in Gibraltar for definite, um, because the the gaffer there also offered me, like, a little part-time job, you know, and I, I totally respect the gaffer and I totally respect the club that offered me what they offered me, but the time just was not right to mm-hmm. go back to Gibraltar. Do you know what I mean? In terms of like, it just oh. was not the time because I can I can get a definite income here in terms of even if I wanted to get a little job, but I, I've got my coaching badges as well. And I know I can always get a decent amount, a half decent amount of money from football. Um, you know, and I, I'm on a university course as well. So I, I just gathered that it would be better staying close to home at times like this, at fragile, fragile times like this, um, rather than being, you know, 2,000 miles away in Gibraltar. Yeah, who knows what's happening then. But you didn't have to wait long, did you? It was only a few weeks until so you actually signed the contract, so you weren't out of, without a club for too long, were you? Literally, so literally I was, you know, the Bocca went bang on, like, the night, you know. I'd signed another contract on, like, you know, I put actual pens to paper on the four ink, something like that. Right. Um, Good so it, it was, it was, it was nice thinking like, you know, I'm going to go back here and the, the club that I was going back to, you know, good, good, good club. And sort of like, I I, I was thinking like, you know, it's, it, it could be good. It's sort of thumbs up again. It's all happy days, but you know, things took a turn for the worst over weeks once again. And, I had to make a decision decision whether to stay or whether to go and I've stayed here. Yeah, fair enough. Do you obviously have you, have you what is the situation at the moment with the Welsh League? Is it still going on ahead as normal then or so 
the Cymru Alliance, uh, well, the Cymru North, as it's branded, um, hasn't played a single game, competitive game, since March last year. Oh, really? Right. So they haven't played a single game. Um, and word is they've got to get the league going. Um, and the latest, realistically, they can get it going is like middle to end of March. And then if not, they're doing one round of games. That's what they've said. They're doing one round of games and that's 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 what's going to happen sort of thing. But no, there's been no real communication in terms of when we're going to start. I don't think the fixtures have even been drawn. So mm. I don't know. It's all up in the air, really. Um, and, you know, I, I signed for starting because there's a few guys I knew there and, and yeah, I, I thought obviously Prestatin, it's a good club, and they've signed a, a quite a few good lads. Um, and yeah, I think I think we could be if if the season commences. You know, realistically, we should be title contenders. So at the moment, is it just like are you still training as normal, by, as, as you would do in normal times? Or? I've another session. I've another session no. since since I left Boca. Uh, in terms of football, yeah. with a club, I haven't had a session since I. Left Boca. Um, probably the last session was probably about the seventh of December, something like that. But obviously, I've trained myself and I've done me runs. And I've done this and I've done that. I've kept relatively fit, and you know, I've done the best I can in a pretty crap situation, to be quite honest. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's fair enough. So, um, the other thing I'd, I'll mention with you, you mentioned your studies. Obviously, is that something you've always been? You wanted to do that alongside your football, so you've got something to fall back on in the future. That's what it was, really. Yeah, it was. I'd been advised by a couple of people to do it, and you know, I'm not being funny. It's the money side of things as well. You know, it's it's even though it's a student loan, etc., it's a little bit of extra money coming in every year. Do you know what I mean? Even though you know I have to pay it back, but it's only in small installments, etc. Um, yeah. Um, what are you actually doing then? What are you studying? So sport and exercise science is what the title of it is. And do you do that? Is it just like an online course? Or have you got to go in? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay, all online. Go in, it? It's all online, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. No, it's good definitely to... Uh, yeah, there's no reason why you can't do both, especially in these times. So, uh, please. That's right, yeah. In a minute. Sounds brilliant. So ideally then, what? where do you see... Where do you see everything going in the next year or two? Just want to get back playing well the, really it's it's um it's with without without sounding a bit mad here or anything you know or excuse me language i don't know i don't know whether you're going to cut it out or not but you know covid's really got us by the balls to be quite yeah. honest and yeah. like you know if if covid says no you can't play footy then we're not playing footy if covid calms down then we're playing footy and it's happy days you know um realistically my, my aim for the next year is just to get a load of games under my belt, and I've got to get back playing, and I've got to, I've got to have a couple of maybe a, a solid season or a solid season and a half, and see where it takes me really, because I know I feel like I've got the ability to go to progress higher, wherever it be, Cymru Premier, whether it be Conference North, whether it be you know Evo Stick Prem, you know wherever it is, you know I feel as though. Realistically, if I'm good enough and I stay in the game, I'm always going to get something. Um, but that's me being very harsh on myself. I also forgot to mention I was training with Stockport County um, in de December 2019, right the way to COVID, as yeah. well as being at Whitchurch Oldport. Um, and I was doing well there. And it was frustrating that, that things ended with them because they've got, quite good links with FC United of Manchester and all the sort of Manchester teams. Um, but obviously, you know, I couldn't train with them whilst COVID was going on because, you know, they can't take trialists in, they can't just take any, any random Tom Dick or Harry, can they, because of all the testing, etc. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I think I have got hopefully a route back into, a, you know, a full-time professional outfit. But even if I haven't, I know I'm going to be okay in terms of, you know, non-league and, uh, you know, I'm being so realistic there and so harsh, you know, from where I come from and where I am now, you know, it's it's been a mad journey, but, you know, it's it shows how hard it is, no matter, you know, where you are from a young age. 
Everton, Shrewsbury, Liverpool, Wolves, you know, Stockport County, everywhere. Been literally, you know, all across the country. And I'm not being funny, I'm here today and everyone's in the same boat. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter with all these conference lads, where, where they've been. Um, we're all in the same boat where we can't play. It's as simple as that. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair enough. I think you've got a very, very wise head on you, given the current situation. Um, you know, obviously, a goalkeeper's career is a long one. You're still in the early days of it. But this is it. Realistically, where where do you where do you see yourself in five years, or what are your realistic ambitions? Playing a conference. Yeah, I'd love to play for Wrexham. Yeah, is that, I'd is love that, to play for Wrexham. Is that you support as well? Yeah. I wouldn't say to support, but I'm always looking out for them. And, you know, if I can, you know, if I could go to a game or if I can go to a game, I'd go to a game, definitely. And especially with all the rumours of, you know, the takeover there, etc. Yeah. You know, it's really, it, at the time as well, when it first happened, there was a right buzz about um, about Wrexham, you know. Um, and I just, I hope that goes through. But it's, um, that would be lovely to play for, Wrexham, yeah, I'd love to do that. And ge- genuinely, that is like an aspiration of mine to play for Wrexham. Fingers crossed. But um, yeah, first things first, let's hopefully you get back to playing football as soon as possible. That's it, yeah. Um, let's hope things sort themselves out in the world full stop. And I just like yeah, to yeah. watch a game personally. It's not the same watching it on TV. Just want to. No, it's not. It's, it but is it's, so it's, frustrating. Um, but yeah, keep in touch. We'll follow your progress and um, give us a shout if you've. Uh, ever got any news but fingers crossed things work out for you soon mate awesome thank you very much I appreciate right. um, appreciate your time Josh no problem thanks for your time as well Josh. have a good evening mate right straight take okay, care to our